Monday Night Raw will take place in Los Angeles, California tonight in the famous Staples Center. So the Staples Center is also known as the home of the Los Angeles Lakers and the Los Angeles Lakers' newest draftee, the man who they drafted second overall in the NBA draft on Thursday, Lonzo Ball will be there. And his father, LeVar Ball, will also be there. And LeVar Ball is... You know, it's just some guy who's benefiting off of his son's success, going on all the talk shows, saying he'll beat Michael Jordan in a one-on-one basketball game. You know, talking about Kobe, talking about Magic, talking about every single buddy, LeBron, talking about LeBron's kids, yeah, whatever. So he's talking all this trash. He talks some trash at the NBA championship. Now, everybody realizes this guy, oh, this guy... He's good. He's bringing in ratings. Everyone's talking about him. We could use him for some ratings because our ratings are in the fucking shitter. So he is on Raw tonight. And unfortunately, we all have to watch it. He'll be on Miz TV. So we'll see how if this is a complete disaster or maybe it's somewhat entertaining. And also, hopefully this does happen. Steve Austin is backstage. Hopefully uh, Austin is there and hopefully he appears on camera. I mean, he's usually there when they're in Los Angeles, but uh, hopefully he actually appears on is actually a a part of the show that'd be kind of cool so staples center raw is usually very memorable last time they were there the rock was there he shot a movie you know he he, uh called cm punk punk didn't answer because he was walking his dog so hopefully raw is an entertaining show tonight so the show starts off with the fucking fucking uh, yeah I don't even know what else to say. Fuck this guy. I wish he'd just tear his ACL. Fuck this motherfucker. I'm so fucking sick of seeing his fucking smug ass face. It's unbearable. Fuck this guy. Just tear your ACL, motherfucker. For fuck's sakes. It's so fucking bullshit. So he's talking. The fans are booing. An ambulance comes out. It's Braun, of course. Goes to confront Braun. They have a brawl on the stage. He, um... And as they're fighting on the stage, Braun, it looks like he's about to fall off, but he grabs Roman when he's going for a Superman punch, throws him off the stage into the ambulance, and a sick-looking bum crowd adore. They, they went nuts. They loved it. They were chanting like crazy. There was a chance of thank you, Strowman. They were just cheering like crazy. Uh, Braun puts him in the ambulance. Fans love it. And when he does his pose, all the fans do his pose with him. So that was kind of cool. And I like how the fans kept chanting, we want Strowman. Guys, if you want to get rid of Roman Reigns, let's chant for Braun Strowman. Stop booing Reigns, chant Strowman. Say, we want Strowman, chant for Braun Strowman. And, st- and keep booing Reigns up, just chant for Strowman more. Focus your attention on supporting Strowman rather than just booing Reigns, even though Reigns deserves it because he fucking sucks. So that's, that's what I would do. One thing I've noticed, whenever Strowman comes out with the ambulance, I always think of Scott Steiner. I think Ryback did that a few years ago when he came out with the ambulance, so I guess that's kind of his, uh, I guess it's going to be part of the gimmick. So there's a six-man tag with Finn Balor and the Hardys against uh, Cesaro Sheamus and Elias Samson. Um, I guess it's just kind of a filler match. I think we'll see... Uh, a tag match at, and uh, a Great Balls of Fire along with uh, Finn Balor and the Drifter. Don't really have much interest in this. Saw the Finn Balor smoke. I thought the demon was coming for a second, but just a regular Finn. They've gone through two commercial breaks, and this fucking match ended already. Who the fuck is Josh Dumel? Well, I mean, when I hear him talk, he sounds as disinterested as I do, so it looks like we have something in common. So Balor pinned uh, Cesaro for the win, as I expected. I thought it would probably end like that. Um, again, I mean, this Josh Dumal guy sounds like he does not want to be there, but he's there from because of some obligation with WWE. It's funny. He don't give a fuck. How can you blame him, though? This show kind of sucks. They do another Goldust, um, another Shot of Dreams promo. So they announce it's Goldust and R Truth next. I do not want to see this at all. This first hour, I mean, they're having another match. There's a lot that's happened that people actually want to see. I mean, this whole LeVar Ball thing, Steve Austin, maybe he's there. I don't know if he's he's there, but I don't know if he's going to be a part of the show. 
there's of course big cast uh there's no there's nothing with the woman i mean they barely do anything with the woman anymore they were on the show for two seconds last week i mean and now we're stuck with another match in the first hour i'm just bored man goldust is wearing his 1996 attire um and in the match it was just a beat down he has this new cameraman i i think it's kind of stupid but whatever so um they have paul Heyman in a backstage segment and joe comes up from behind him and threatens him now up next we're gonna get the miss tv segment with the big baller family lavar ball the father son lonzo and i i don't know who the middle son is leangelo i think that's his name lamello Anyway, his two sons are with him, so that's what they showed in the graphic. So this whole gauntlet match with the woman, they showed Bailey getting uh, picking up one of the balls backstage. Uh, maybe it's one of the balls used for great balls of fire. Uh, balls is the theme for WWE, then this built up to this next pay-per-view. Um, anyway, uh, that segment with La- uh, Lonzo Ball and LeVar Ball and Miz is next. So we'll see if this this might be a train wreck. Well, I really don't know what to say. I'm going to pretend that never happened. Okay. So now we have a six-man tag, and I'm just going to wait till this match is over and try to enjoy the rest of the show. Please end this fucking dreadful tag team match. It's so fucking shit. Oh my god, this fucking match will never end. I don't know if I can make it through this fucking match. Please, for fuck's sake, end this goddamn abortion of a fucking piece of shit match. With no one that anyone gives two shits about in this goddamn fucking match. For fuck's sake, end the fucking match. Or for, I'm just, I'm not gonna make it. I'm gonna fucking fall asleep right now having to sit through this goddamn match. Well, we made it. It's finally fucking over. Thank goodness. If there is a god out there... Thank you for this ending of this fucking piece of shit match. I'm actually interested in the show now. Enzo is here. He's going to address what happened with Cass. Man, I'm so bummed out they split them up. They really could have been something big. Ah, I wish they would have kept them together for so long. I mean, they really could have been like the New Age Outlaws of this generation. But, I mean, they booked Enzo so badly. They had him do that thing where he tried to bang Lana while everyone knew she was married to Rusev. And I think the fans turned on him. They don't know what they're doing. They're so out of touch. That fucking the writing team is so fucking terrible. But man, it's such a waste. What a waste this team was. Man, that no. Oh. Uh, the segment was actually great. Enzo did probably some of his best moral mic work of his career. He was pretty damn awesome here. Um, Cass, I mean, he got the wet treatment. The crowd was so annoying and. They pretend to make up. I mean, we all knew Cass was going to turn almost immediately. I thought they might drag it out for a few more weeks and then do another big heel turn, but um, they did it right now. He gives them the clothesline on the ramp and then does the girl plus ram on the ramp killing him. So it is what it is. I mean, uh, at the end, at close to it, I was thinking, man, I wish they just maybe I wish they just change their mind. But that company's assholes. Fuck Vince and Kevin Dunn. I mean, fuck you guys for real. I mean, they could have had so much more mileage off this tag team, but they fucked up. They had Big Cast, Ren Corey Graves. I don't know what they're doing. Um, yeah. And I can't believe it, man. They fucked up with that tag team. So fucking stupid. Whatever. Rollins is out. I don't care about Rollins. I'm really starting to dislike Rollins more and more by the day. Or by every show I watch with him. I'm just not enjoying him at all as a baby face. And I I think he's one of the most overrated performers in the company. He's not good on the mic. I'm not enjoying his matches. All he does is dive after dive after dive. He sells his knee the whole match. He did that match at WrestleMania and Triple H. He does. Uh, he sells his knee for 20 minutes. Then he runs around the whole ring, does dives, just keeps running and running. I mean, how do you run around after you sell your whole knee the whole match? He, I don't even think he's, you think he's, you think he's a dumb worker. I, I don't like Seth. So they show Brock Lesnar coming. That segment is next. Um, the Seth Rollins match ended. Uh, I'm not a fan of him anymore. I just, I'm just, I'm not enjoying his work. Um, also worth noting, they showed Mickey James and Dana Brooke looking at the balls. I mean, they got their balls. And the reason I mention that in the background, you can see Kurt Angle 
looking very confused on his phone. So we're continuing that storyline. Funny thing, during the Rollins match, there was actually a Bray Wyatt promo. I forgot about it because I didn't pay attention, but the fans in the arena from Twitter, I read this on Twitter, were actually chanting JoJo. So, uh, Fans, <laughs> letting Bray Wyatt have it because his promos suck and his character really is stale as fuck right now because he's a loser. The so Shasha uh, Banks basically uh, picking up a number. So now Paul Heyman's in a ring. And here comes Brock. Um, I wonder if they're going to let the woman go on last. We don't have that gauntlet match main event raw because I don't know what else is left for the show unless, I mean, Austin comes, which I don't think is going to happen. Uh, yeah, they had Brock come out. He had Joe come back, come out uh, and sneak attack him. Uh, he put him in the cocaine clutch. And it was actually a really cool sequence and Brock tried to break it by throwing him into the uh, Titan Tron. They went two times. I think they almost cracked through one of the boards. Um, I thought they should have had Joe choke him out instead. They had Joe choke him for a while. Brock was about to go out. And then you have the revival. Since they have absolutely nothing to do, they could be feuding with Enzo and Cass, who would be very over right now. Maybe them. Instead, they're here to break up this fight. And um, I thought they should have just had Brock just go out. I don't know if he wouldn't go out, but I don't know what's happening there. Um, it was a good segment. It was well done. Just set up the match, and um, I think I mean this. If this if Brock's on next week, it's one hundred percent sure he's winning on Great Balls of Fire because they don't have anyone get this kind of, uh, you know, get this much on Brock unless he's winning. So obviously he's gonna win at Great Balls of Fire. I don't expect him to be on Raw next week. So I think this was probably your go home segment to the show. Assholes, put the fucking cruiser right here, man. Right when I'm about, right when I'm tired, I'm thinking about falling asleep. Uh, I don't think I can make it through to see the women's match. These fucking cruiser rates are on. God damn, these fucking cruiser rates. When are they gonna fucking pull the plug on these fucking losers? Things not working. It's not working. It's not gonna get over. Please stop. So I fell asleep during the cruiser rate match for about 15 minutes. I woke up, with, I heard Paul Heyman yelling, and then I saw Alexa Bliss and Nia Jax uh, cut a promo in the back. Main event is the Omen's Gauntlet match, so let's see how this one goes. I wanted to see that match for a while. That's easily probably been of all the women that are on the roster. I've actually been looking forward to seeing Alexa and Sasha for a while. Because there's, of course, the rumors of there's heat. That should have been saved for SummerSlam. That has no business on a show like Great Balls of Fire. They should have saved that for SummerSlam. I think they could have even dragged that out to WrestleMania if they found a way, if they wanted to do that. But I'm afraid it's going to be Alexa and Nia at uh, SummerSlam, and they might just do this match right now in Great Balls of Fire because they buried everyone else, and they put Nia over very strong. Um, I think they're doing this. I mean, Sasha Banks is nominated for a Teen Choice Award, and maybe I think that might be the reason they're doing this so early. And that's why they had her in the main event here. But uh, I think they should save, uh, they, they really should have saved that for SummerSlam. I suppose they can do a DQ finish or a count out finish or a, uh, some kind of cheap finish. Alexa retaining and they can do the big rematch at SummerSlam. But that that was a SummerSlam match. I don't know why you do it first, but it is what it is. They put on last. Uh, yeah, they've killed Bailey. What are you going to do? That. It is what it is. They've, they've destroyed her. It's, there's nothing else to say. It happened, but, you know, saying the same thing about Sasha about a couple months ago, or at least a month ago, and they revived Sasha. Sasha's back. So maybe Bailey can get nominated for some kind of Teen Choice Award or some award show. Maybe her career can be revitalized. Maybe they will uh, give her a second chance. So it is what it is. Uh, yeah. It's, ugh, that company, they, they ruined Bailey, and everyone else looks like she, I think Nia's a terrible worker, she's not good, I mean, she would be a very nice person, and all, but I mean, she's terrible in the, in the ring, so, um, Sasha Winning actually got a decent pop, then Kurt Angle in the ring celebrating with her, and, you know, congratulating her, I don't know, we'll see how this match goes, uh, yeah, even though they might not like each other, I mean, they're not gonna, I don't think they'd shoot on each other. They might be friends now, so... Some of all that rumors, I mean, it could be NXT. It could be, you know... know, They could have put it all squashed in, you know, be friends for all we know, but... It is what it is, and there is some intrigue, so we'll see if they use that real-life drama to hype up the match, but... We're getting Sasha and Alexa next at Great Balls of Fire.